Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Free Code Camp OKC and today's talk is going to be about CSS basics. Um, this is going to be part one. So I'll introduce myself to you, who is this guy talking here. So uh, my name is Amiya Joshi. I'm a front-end developer from uh, here in the Oklahoma City Metro. Currently I reside in Norman. And um, uh, I'm going to tell you I'm not an expert coder by any means, but I've been working with HTML, CSS and JavaScript for a good, a good while now. Um, I got my um, my associates in computer science from OCCC uh, back in 2014, and um, ever since then I've been more or less consistently, uh, you know, uh, trying to uh, stay on stay up to date with the latest uh, web technologies and everything. Um, so um, pretty well versed with uh, those those first three languages. And um, uh, last year I joined Free Code Camp. Um, and also started going to the pre-code camp, Oklahoma City meetups, um, where I've met a whole bunch of awesome people. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I picked up, in the during the curriculum, I picked up jQuery uh, fairly well. And more recently, I've been going into uh, React and uh, made my first React app. So yeah, I'm part college, part self-taught, and of course, always learning. So just to give you a quick idea of what I've done uh, over, the, uh, over the years using my free time, uh, this is my portfolio. This is actually, I would say, version 4. So it's been through several iterations. And you can see here, uh, I have a ticker uh, uh, showing what my handle is on and what my handle is on various uh, websites. Uh, and then I have a navigation here. And then the rest of it is pretty simple. <coughs> you know, it has uh, my, my coding examples and resume. And... Um, uh, my certification that I got uh, after completing the um, free code camp curriculum last year, so and some contact information. So fairly simple layout, and then uh, this is a website that I've created. Uh, I've actually um, I made a video on this a while back, but um, uh, yeah, the website is essentially all this is is uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript at work with a little bit of jQuery. So, and it has several pages in there. This is basically uh, showcasing my, some add-ons I made, freeware add-ons for a freeware game. So, so yeah, all, all these pages here. Um, and everything you see here is, is linked to one, all the CSS um, that I've used on this website is in one CSS file. And so I'll be talking about uh, why it's uh, advantageous to use uh, an external CSS file for all of your CSS when you're making something like this. Okay, so yeah, uh, let's go back to uh, let's go back to the uh, talk here. So exactly what is CSS? If you're completely new to CSS, it stands for cascading style sheets. And so I'm going to be going over why it's called cascading. So it has to do with uh, these two concepts, priority and specificity. Um, and I could I could talk all day long about these, but um, I wouldn't be doing you any good um, unless I actually showed you both of these concepts in, in examples, uh, coding example form, okay? So I'll talk about these uh, while I'm coding um, in just a few minutes. So uh, CSS is not a programming language. Um, it is a style sheet language. So obviously, uh, it's kind of like this. You have a, when you start uh, constructing a building, obviously, you know, at, at first the building's just plain, you know, glass, steel, uh, not even glass, steel, concrete, uh, it looks plain, looks dull and boring, kind of bland. Um, CSS is the stuff that comes after the main structure has been laid out, been, it's been constructed. So that's your HTML. Your actual web page document layout is your HTML, uh, the content itself. And then CSS is what uh, makes it look pretty. All right. So once you get the building uh, constructed, then you start adding your glass cladding, uh, you know, uh, interior decoration, whatever, uh, that's going to make it look look good. Um, CSS also helps to an extent. It helps in uh, organizing uh, your layouts, uh, your HTML layout, that is, and uh, makes your HTML look uh, really nice and neat, uh, makes it look presentable. So, so uh, proceeding with uh, what I'm going to cover in this in this video, um, this, like I said, this is going to be part one. Um, and uh, there are four main kind of topics I'm going to cover, um, but part one is going to cover inline, internal, and external CSS. 
uh, and then I'll talk about um, selectors, properties, and values, the things that make up CSS rules, and then uh, priority and specificity, uh, like I mentioned, kind of play into this into uh, this section. And then uh, I'll be talking about how you apply colors to different elements in HTML, and then also talk about fonts, including Google Fonts. And then uh, part two will uh, you know will kind of go a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more advanced, kind of a little bit more hardcore here. So CSS box model is uh, kind of the standard uh, when it comes to uh, understanding CSS. And I'll talk about using, you know, these days modern browsers have what's called uh, inspectors. Um, essentially, uh, if you open uh, a browser and you, you right click, you'll see a, in, in the options menu that you get, you'll see an option to uh, open an inspector for that browser. And uh, my, my uh, browser of choice is Firefox, and I use the inspector um, pretty much every time I'm, I'm working on a web, a web project. So uh, the inspector is a really useful tool, and uh, I'll talk about, I'll, I'll show you exactly how you can use that uh, to your advantage. Uh, we'll also talk about margins and padding uh, and borders. Uh, and then uh, finally, uh, just a little tidbit on using comments, so that will round up part two. All right, so uh, let's get right to uh, let's get right to it. I'll show you I'll, I'll show you some code now. All right, so here we go. Um, I'm gonna this is uh, Visual Studio Code. It's a it's a really cool um, source code editor, um, and um, it comes with a lot of cool features. Uh, you can also add extensions to it. And one of the extensions I've installed, I'm gonna be using right now, is Live Server. And uh, essentially, what Live Server does, it any time you make a make a change and you save your changes, um, it's gonna it's gonna reflect those changes in the browser. All right, so you don't have to keep refreshing, you don't have to keep refreshing um, your browser to see your changes. So I'm gonna the way you start the Live Server in, in VS Code is uh, click on this Go Live, and it launches it automatically launches uh, a browser window, your default browser window. Um, in my case, it's Firefox. So I have some, you know, really basic CSS here. Um, uh, two level one headings and this paragraph tag. And um, really, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, that sounds kind of, that sounds kind of a really uh, minimalist uh, way of doing things. But that's all we'll need for for now. So I'm gonna start start off by showing you some uh, inline CSS. All right. So as the name suggests, inline CSS is basically uh, within a line of HTML, and it goes inside your opening uh, HTML tag. All right. So the way you uh, <coughs> the way you do it is style, and let's um, let's make this a this paragraph tag. Let's make it a color of green. All right. Let's put a green color to the font there. All right, and a semicolon. Give that a save. All right, so that's inline inline CSS at work. All right, that's so your paragraph is now in a, in a green font. Now, inline CSS, uh, you know, it's pretty much obsolete. Um, I cannot remember the last time I actually used inline CSS. Um, the reason it's not um, it's not used pretty much at all these days. Is because um, it results in um, it results in what's called document bloat, and you really don't want you do, you really don't want your document your HTML to have a whole bunch of CSS mixed in. Uh, it just results in it just results in a mess. Um, if you have a lot of HTML, um, and most of the time you will when you're when you're doing uh, web projects, mixing in a whole bunch of CSS for each different tag, uh, you know that's gonna get that's gonna get messy big time so you don't want to do that you want to separate your html from your css you want to keep them separate so speaking of that uh, let's uh, take a look at internal css um, now this does the job of separating the styling from the content but uh, this also has a, a major drawback and i'll show you um, why in just a second so the internal CSS again starts with style, and this time uh, what you want to do is say type. You have to specify the type uh, text slash CSS, and um, 
close that, and then uh, VS VS Code automatically closes as the as the closing uh, closing tag for you. Okay, so and inside these uh, opening and closing style tags is where your CSS goes. So let's uh, I'll target the paragraph tag again, and let's give it a different color this time. So color, uh, let's go with. Uh, I'll just, I'll just do red, plain and simple. So there you go. Um, your paragraph is now in a red, a red color. The text is red color. Yeah, I don't know why I have two windows here. Okay, so duplicates, uh, duplicate windows down there. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, internal CSS. <coughs> But uh, like I said, there's a major drawback to this, and the drawback is uh, essentially that uh, you cannot use these. Say you have a lot of, uh, you know, several. You have a website with several pages. You have index.html, and then you probably have I don't know shop.html, uh, products.html, um, whatever pages you have. If you want to apply these styles that you're doing for the index page, if you want them to uh, be applied elsewhere in other pages. You're gonna to have to uh, repeatedly copy and paste these styles over and over in the head sections of those other pages, and that can get tedious pretty quick as well. So, um, also, uh, like I mentioned previously, with inline styles, uh, document bloat can also be uh, can also be a concern here, because if you have a whole bunch of CSS uh, for your page in the head section. Uh, imagine having to scroll through like a hundred lines of CSS first, and even before you reach the HTML, right? Uh, that's that's pretty inefficient. So, so you don't want to do that. So the uh, preferred method, the the preferred method of writing CSS is use is is it an external um, CSS file, like I have right here. So you only need to do one thing to link your CSS file, because obviously it's, it's, it's a, in a separate folder, or say, excuse me, a separate file. Uh, so you have to tell the, you have to tell the browser, um, hey, I have this external CSS file. Uh, I want to link this file to my HTML and then apply all the CSS in that file to my HTML. So the way you do that is slightly different, but again, pretty simple. So you say link. And so you have, you have uh, three components. The first one here is type text slash CSS, and then you wanna you wanna tell the browser, hey, uh, there's uh, you wanna tell the browser two things. The first is, uh, you know, what the relation is of the file you're linking. Okay, so that's there's an attribute called rel, which is short for relation, and um, in this case, it's a style sheet, right? Simple. And there's one more. So href, the href attribute um, specifies exactly what file you're linking. That the browser needs to know the file name as well, not not just that you're linking a CSS file, but exactly what file. So CSS basics in this case will be CSS basics.css. And um, close the link. The link uh, the link tag is is a self closing tag, so you don't actually have to have a separate closing closing tag there. And that's it. And then you save your uh, you save your HTML file, and now you can start writing CSS um, in your external CSS file. So before I actually start writing CSS, uh, let me go ahead and show you um, you know what a CSS rule is. All right. So a CSS rule essentially uh, consists of three major uh, three main components. So you have a selector. And in this, in this case, it's a level one heading, just like um, you know, just like I uh, I have here h1. Uh, now, this can be uh, an HTML element, like h1 div uh, p p for paragraph, um, uh, ul for an ordered list, whatever. But you can also you can also um, target your elements via uh, IDs and classes. Okay, and um, <coughs> uh, classes are recommended. The recommended method of targeting your CSS uh, more than IDs, and um, again, I'll show you in just a bit why that is. But 
if you wanted to um, target with an ID, um, all you would do is say, in this case, I, I have an ID called first div. So you'd say hashtag first div, opening and closing uh, curly braces, and then whatever CSS you want in there. Okay, that's not CSS, but you get the idea. Um, <clears throat> So you say that, and then with a, with an ID, uh, with a class name. Say for example, I wanted to, um, you know, uh, make the background of this div uh, a different color with this class class name of introduction. All right. So with a class name, all you do is say dot, and then the class name. In this case, introduction, and uh, let's go and apply a background color. So I'll show you how this works. So let's say uh, brown. Okay. And there you go. There's a background color of brown. Looks kind of brown, reddish brown, I guess. Um, but yeah, on that first div. So uh, looking at this diagram, so this is what's called a declaration block. All all the stuff, including the opening curling. Opening and, opening and closing curly braces. Uh, this is a declaration block, and then whatever goes inside here are your declarations. So your declarations are made up of properties, okay? Different properties, there are all kinds of different properties, and then each of them will have a value. And then you have to have, uh, make sure you end, end, the, uh, <coughs> end your declarations with a semicolon, all right? So that's, uh, in, in general, uh, at, at its simplest level, that's a CSS rule. Um, you can have only one, you can have more than one. Uh, sometimes you'll have multiple lines of uh, of uh, declarations. Pretty normal. All right, so now that we've looked at a CSS rule, or what CSS rules are, uh, let's go ahead into, uh, let's go into selectors, uh, excuse me, let's go ahead into uh, priority and specificity. Okay, and um, <coughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to uh, show you, you just some simple examples. Um, you know, this topic actually goes kind of, kind of deep. So um, it can get complicated pretty quickly, but um, <clears throat> the key to remember is, uh, you know, which selectors have what kind of specificity. So I have this, um, I looked at this uh, uh, Wikipedia page here, um, and it explains specificity fairly well. Um, so you have um, you have your different levels of selectors. You have your H1 or your paragraph tag, and then you can also go you can also go deep, uh, deeper than that. Uh, you don't have to you know say for example, I can do um, div H1, and then you know do you write my CSS declarations inside that block. I can do that. So each of these uh, selectors has a what is called a specificity weight system, um, and and there are you know you can see there are four four different uh, values uh, that each uh, each selector can have, and uh, the numbers uh, go in increasing can go in increasing order. But the the other thing to remember is going from right to left is in order of increasing specificity, and uh, the selector that gets the gets the uh, higher specificity is the one that the browser will will say hey this is the one i apply to whatever elements being targeted okay so for example h1 specificity here is you know pretty low on the on the scale so uh, it's all the way to the right it's it's a one okay if you if you go say for example you might have a paragraph tag and inside the paragraph tag you might have uh, an m which is an emphasis tag and so you're going too deep, okay? You're going two levels in, so so that's why specificity is a bit higher here. That will take precedence over um, over uh, a lower over a tag that has a lower specificity. Um, for example, in this case, if you had in your CSS, if you had uh, the same, uh, you know, if you had a different color, say for paragraph. And then you went, you went, you went uh, below that paragraph uh, tag and said, "P M color green." Well, whatever paragraph, whatever color you assign to the P tag, is now being overridden because this has a higher specificity. Okay, 
and then you can see down as you go further down the list uh, you know it's an order of increasing specificity by selector uh, now you see here uh, style this is an inline inline style like I showed you at, at first has the this one has the highest specificity um, and um, I'll show you uh, I'll show you a quick example here of how this all works so Let's go. Let's go to the H1 this time, um, and um, let's say style. So I'm I'm actually using an inline style just for uh, just for you know the purpose of uh, demonstration here. Um, normally I wouldn't be doing this, but so let's uh, let's style this with color of. Let's see. Can I get that option again? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll just go with blue. Why not? Okay. So I have an inline style of color blue for the H1 tag here. Um, and then I'm going to go in my external CSS and say H1. Let's go with green again. Okay. Just keep it simple. Okay. Now that I've saved, I've saved my CSS and my HTML files. Uh, let's see what happens. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, so you see, because of the higher specificity of the inline style that I applied only to the first uh, H1 uh, H1 element, the browser has selected the one with the higher specificity for this one. Even though I'm saying in my external file, I'm saying all H1 tags color them green okay so when you have like a uh, you know you just select an h you just select h1 out right uh it will apply to all h1 elements um in your uh in your html file same for same for any other like paragraph or div if you if you just say div it will that's that the whatever styles you have for that um selector will be applied to all divs in there so and that's normally what you would expect, but because of specificity, even though I'm saying color all H1 tags green, uh, because this has a higher specificity, this one is colored blue. All right, and that's that's what's reflected in the browser. All right, so um, and of course this is another reason, yet another reason why inline styles are not recommended. Now let's uh, let's do something else. All right, so just wanted to show you one more example of uh, specificity before I proceed to colors. So I'm going to give this div, this one here on the outside, I'm going to give it an ID name. All right. And uh, I know you're thinking, why even bother giving it an ID name? You might be thinking, you know, because it already has this class wrapper, right? So why even bother doing an ID here? But uh, I just wanted to show you something real quick. So I'm going to call that ID main div. And I'm going to use this ID along with the uh, H1 tags as my selector. So. Div h1, and I'm going to give the uh, h1 tags inside that a color. Let's do orange. All right, now uh, let's go. <coughs> excuse me. Let's go back to the uh, HTML here, and uh, this uh, this div here. Uh, I'm going to use this class name introduction. All right, and I'm going to use, I'm going to color this H1 with a different color. Let's say I want to do a different color on that one. Say introduction H1, color, yeah, not something again I'd use, but uh, it's okay for now. Olive. and uh, save both my HTML and CSS. 
All right. So now that I've saved uh, my files, let's go back to the browser, see what's going on. Okay, so you can see, as expected, that's orange, but um, you know, I, you would think that would be olive, right? Because that's what we said specifically. Oh, here it said introduction H1, color that olive. But um, in this case, the browser looks at this, it, it, it's, a, it's getting conflicting information, right? Because you're saying uh, color all H1s inside the main div, color them orange. But then you're going inside here saying this H1 colored it olive. So now it has to pick between these two, right? Um, and the one it picks is the one with the higher specificity, which is this one with the ID. Right, because as, as, as it says in this table, IDs have a higher specificity than your classes, all right? So that's that's how uh, specificity works in the browser. Your when you have a con when you have a conflict like this, the CSS effects are going to cascade over to the one with the higher specificity. All right. So that's just one of the reasons why it's not recommended to use IDs. Uh, there are a few others. Um, you know, IDs are unique. So uh, once you declare an ID name, um, you know that's that's it. You can have more than one class name. All right, you can have more than one class name. Like instead of uh, the ID main div, you can have a class name main div. All right, you can do it that way if you like. But you cannot have uh, you you cannot uh, have more than one uh, ID name inside the declaration. All right. So uh, that's uh, that's uh, priority and specificity. In a nutshell, uh, kind of a simplistic example, I know, but uh, just wanted to just wanted to demonstrate how this all plays out in the browser. So um, with that, let's uh, proceed on to colors. All right. So uh, before I proceed with colors, um, just a real quick note. Um, I just realized my cursor was not showing properly, or actually showing at all, um, in the previous segments. So my my apologies. I was actually um, showing some stuff, uh, dem pointing some stuff out to using my cursor. So uh, that if that caused confusion, um, I'm sorry about that. So I've uh, switched my. Uh, I'm still in the Adobe Studio, so I've switched my capture from window to display, display capture. So hopefully this this is working a lot better now. Okay, so um, you, you might notice I've also kind of zoomed in. Uh, I've zoomed in uh, in my VS Code in both index and index and uh, CSS basics. And um, I'm also going to get a zoom in in my browser so you can see this better as well. Sometimes in videos, uh, you know, stuff you can see it, but then some some things you cannot. So um, just wanted to uh, make sure you guys can see everything clearly. All right, so yeah, let's go to let's go ahead and uh, do some stuff with colors now. So uh, applying colors in CSS is pretty straightforward. All right, so let's go ahead and <coughs> uh, excuse me, I have a little scratchy throat today. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and apply a color to this H1 tag, OK? And it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So I only want to apply it to this H1, all right? So I'm going to go introduction, H1. And to apply a font color, all you say is color. And that's the property, property name. And let's go with uh, something different this time. Let's go with purple. All right, why not? So purple, and that's the color there, right? So it's the color purple has been applied to the font for the H1. So pretty, uh, pretty simple. If I wanted to do uh, background color, Let's go ahead and do a background color on the uh, second div here it will put the header with the heading CSS is cool. So I'm going to do it the same way. 
by using the uh, second dupe class class name. And uh, with background color, the property name is background hyphen color. All right. And um, let's see. Let's go with uh, let's go with royal blue. I'm I'm just throwing some random colors out here, so there's nothing, no method here. Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, the text is still black, um, but the color, the background color for this div is royal blue. And uh, let's go ahead and apply color here for the font. Uh, let's make that white. So you can see the text is now white, the background is royal blue. So yeah, pretty straightforward stuff here. So that's that's the bare bones of colors. Um, the simplest way to to apply colors in CSS. Um, so there are actually a couple of other ways you can do colors, uh, and I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about those now. So uh, you can see here uh, there are two different, two other different methods um, using RGB and RGBA, and I'll I will demonstrate both here in just a bit. So RGB um, stands for red, green, and blue, and um, each uh, each you know each different uh, uh, color here is represented by uh, a number, all right, to produce one unique color. So it's a combination of red, green, and blue that uh, you know when they're given values they produce one unique color and the values go in the range from 0 to 255 inclusive all right so i could say 0 0 0 for all three and that would give me a black um, or i could say 255 for all three that would give me white all right so the higher of the scale we go um the lighter the color is going to get the you know the more of a white uh, tone is going to get the lower the number goes more of a dark tone is gonna get. All right. So let's see that um, in action. So this H1, I'm gonna target that H1 again. Um, you know, let's go ahead and target the P tag. Why not? So let me get my spelling right there. Oh. Introduction paragraph. That's what I'm targeting. So. Um, Let's just do a random color, font color for the P tag using RGB. Okay. Now, if you tab, let's try that again. If you tab, then uh, VS Code automatically populates it with a standard red, green, and blue. Okay. Just wanted to show you that. Um, obviously, we we want something, we want something a little bit more specific. So. Um, Let's do, let's do, let's see if I can get kind of a blue, darkish blue, something like that. So I don't want any red, so that'll be zero. Um, green, let's go with like a 30. And let's go with, uh, for the blue, let's go with uh, 200. All right. Here's another uh, feature in VS Code you can, you can use to your advantage. Um, if you mouse over, it will pop up this uh, handy color tool, and you can actually see, you know, the, this is this bar acts as your transparency. All right, you can see it added, it added an, another value here. So um, for now, I'm just gonna leave that out. Uh, I'll talk that in just a little bit when I uh, go over RGBA. But here you can see I have this. You know, this area just allows you to, you know, uh, look at different saturations, so the same same color. And then this is a color palette, which you can, you know, you can actually uh, scroll, you know, move the uh, move the bar here to scroll through different colors. All right. So uh, let's go back to what I had. I think I had thirty, and then two hundred. Okay. So that should color my paragraph font in the blue. All right. So there you go. All right. That's my paragraph. Uh, 
Okay, so that um, that's how you do RGB. Now, um, RGBA is essentially the same, um, works in pretty much the same way, except uh, you have a uh, you have an additional value, you know, this alpha alpha value. So the alpha value essentially controls your transparency, and um, you know, with a VS Code uh, color palette, you can actually control that with the slider, the the transparency slider. But um, essentially, what alpha does is is um, you have uh, it takes values from zero through one, inclusive of both, right? <clears throat> so zero is completely transparent. One is completely opaque. One is like not having any uh, not having any transparency at all. One one is just like you you know as if there were no transparency, right? So uh, you you can also assign values. Um, in between these two, um, uh, like you know, point one, point two, point three, you know, all the way through one. And uh, so let's uh, take a look at RGBA now in the uh, in code. So well, I actually have to target something first, don't I? So let's do this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give this div here the div first div with the class introduction. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a background color. And um, so let's just use uh, RGB for this one. So I want to do uh, I want to do kind of a dark gray. All right, so fifty. Okay, that's fairly dark. Also, with it. yeah. So that's a fairly dark gray. So I have fifty, fifty, fifty. All right, sounds like hefty, hefty, hefty for some reason. Um, now let's go ahead and give the uh, let's do a color for the font, okay? So for this, let's color the uh, H1 font and the paragraph font. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give that a transparency. So I'm gonna use RGBA. All right. So RGBA. So remember, this takes four values. All right. And what I want to do is I want to show you how transparency works. I'm going to do a 255 all through. So I'm going to do white. Yeah, that's a little too much. 255. And then uh, I'm going to give this a transparency of 0.4. All right. So let's see how this uh, how this looks in the, in the browser. And I really should <laughs> close that. Um, we'll talk about that in just a bit when I talk about, talk about fonts. So, but uh, there you go. All right. Now I know you're saying, wait a minute, that the font looks gray. It doesn't look white. Well, <clears throat> what's going on here is the background color for this div is is this dark gray, right? This color here. Um, but because I'm using RGBA. And I'm setting a transparency level on this, like 0.4. The uh, background color is kind of filtering through the font color, the white font color, and uh, that's why it appears gray. All right, it kind of filters through and produces that effect. So that's what RGBA does. All right. Now, if I were to change this to one, okay, let's change that to one, and then let's see what happens. Now there is absolutely no background color filtering through the the font the letters. The the text appears white as you expect it to and the background color is still what it what it was. Okay. So that's that's RGBA in a nutshell. Uh, my apologies, that was my phone. <laughs> Sorry about that. I am recording this at home after all. Anyway, let's uh, let's proceed with the next uh, the next item in the list here. All right. And that probably that probably you probably heard that as well. Um, so uh, this phone's stupid. Never mind. Okay. Um, all right, so where was I? Um, yeah, so colors that essentially cover uh, essentially covers colors in a nutshell. So you have RGB, RGBA, and um, 
So now, now uh, there's there are, there's actually one more. Okay, there's one more. Um, there's one more method of doing colors, and that's in hexadecimal notation. Um, I'm gonna skip that for now um, because uh, it is a little bit more involved. It's not too co complicated, um, but it is a little bit more involved, and and um, I'm kind of running short on time anyway. So uh, I will, yeah, you know, I might cover that in another in another video, or maybe in part two. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but for now I'm gonna skip that because I want to cover fonts um, in a little bit, uh, you know, in a little bit more in depth. So fonts are just um, almost uh, as simple to use as colors are in CSS. So uh, now there's a thing called um, web safe fonts. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's see here. I say that. Okay, never mind. Uh, if you go, uh, if you go on the web, you just type in, you know, do a search for web safe fonts. You'll get a, you know, you'll get a, like a preview uh, that Google search usually gives you. So Arial, Helvetica, uh, Career New, Career Verdana, Georgia, all these are web safe, and uh, usually you'll find those, uh, you know, built in to uh, pretty much any code editor these days. Um, so let's go ahead and do, I'm going to, I'm going to give just one, apply one font to this wrapper, wrapper class. All right. So I should say wrapper div, div with class wrapper, however you want to say it. So wrapper, and then, uh, the best way to do this is to use a font family, the font family, uh, property. Now you could say font, uh, but that takes several parameters. So to keep things simple, just do font family. And here you can see is yes, career new, career monospace. These are called font families. So uh, let's go with this one, just kind of the more or less the de facto. So the way this works is the browser will look at this, uh, you know, this font family declaration here. So it says, okay, Arial is the first one in the list. Now, if Arial is available, and most of the time it is, it will render your text in your font in Arial. Okay, if Arial is not available for some reason, or if it cannot do Arial, it will fall back to Helvetica. All right, and similarly, if Helvetica is not available either, sans serif, the general sans serif uh, you know style of font will be applied. Okay, so now that I've uh, saved this, let's go ahead and uh, go back to the browser, and you can see it's in Arial now. Okay. So, uh, sans serif. If you ha if you don't know what that means, it basically means without the appendages. Say if I I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out for now. And if I go back to the browser, you can see these, you know, this font. The, the this font has those appendages at the ends. Um, sans serif font doesn't have those appendages. All right. Let's zoom back a little bit. So. That's essentially what. That's essentially how you apply font families to uh, to your CSS to your HTML. Okay. Now there is another way you can do fonts. Um, you can actually import external fonts, and um, I think by far the I may be wrong on this, but by far the most popular choice is Google Fonts. So the way to get there is just uh, the web address is fonts.google.com. And you can see here, Google Fonts has a whole bunch of fonts. Um, I think the browser is having a hard time. <laughs> I'm scrolling too fast here. But uh, you can see here it says 915 of 915 font families. So that's how many choices you have here. So I'm going to show you just one real quickly. By the way, um, uh, Google Fonts is really cool. I use it. I've used it several times. So you, it also gives you categories. So if you want to filter out by category, you can do so. So you can say if you just want, you know, sans serif fonts, you uncheck the other ones, and then you only get sans serif fonts. Okay. Um, and then it's, it shows you updates how many sans serif font families there are, 271. Okay. So I'm just going to go with Roboto, just quickly show you this one here. This is pretty popular. This is a pretty popular font. And it gives you these uh, options here. Okay, sentence form, how it looks in a paragraph form, 
how uh, numbers will look in this. So it's pretty cool, pretty cool tool to have. Um, and then you can also resize it, see how it looks in different sizes. And this one here, it shows you uh, different weights, you know, the thin and then uh, thin 100 italic um, in a bolder, in a bolder font. All right, bolder font weight, I should say. So yeah, it, it gives you uh, uh, quite a few, quite a few options. So we'll go back to, um, let's go back to the regular 400 here. So the way to use this is really simple. You just get, click on the plus icon there, it uh, gives you this pop-up and it says one family selected. You click on this black bar and then it expands this window and it gives you your selection, all that stuff. So everything you need to use this font, Roboto font, is is is, is given here, all right? And uh, it even gives you a load time, which is fast, which is, that's awesome, that's what we want. We want a fast loading time. Um, so the way to use this is really simple. All you do is this link tag, copy that, go to, your, go to the head section of your HTML document and you paste it here. Okay, and that's um, that's step one. Step two is to just copy this here, font family, and this goes in your CSS file. Okay, I'll go ahead and replace that here. Okay, so yeah, that's essentially uh, what you do to use Google Fonts. And if you go back to the browser, um, you can see the font style has changed. Uh, it's it's kind of sort of similar to Arial, but it's kind of a more of a neater, cleaner uh, font. Um, you know, nothing fancy, but it's a, you know, it's it's a when whenever you're doing web design or something, you, you want something that's kind of readable. Nothing, you don't want fancy fonts. So, but it's uh, that's why it's a popular uh, it's a popular font uh, that every a lot of people use these days. So, that's Roboto. So yeah, that, that covers fonts for the most part. Um, so let's take a look at some other things you can do with fonts here. All right, so I'm going to, for now, I'm going to comment this out. So now we, we're back to the standard uh, Times New Roman. Um, just want to show you something real quickly here. And so you can see here, there are a whole bunch of options with fonts. So I'm not going to go ahead into all of these, but I'm going to show you some of them. So first one is font weight. All right, and then uh, let's go with bold. If you go back to the browser, you can see it's kind of it looks it looks darker now, right? Uh, it looks definitely looks bolder than it was. And uh, if I comment that out, save it, go back, you can see the paragraph tag. Definitely, headings are uh, headings are kind of um, uh, you know by by default they they appear bold anyway. Um, but uh, you can see the paragraph tag, uh, it's back to what it was, so. So now I'm going to, um, let's go ahead and uh, reapply this one. Okay, so there are some other options, um, basic options for fonts. Uh, you have font size and font size you know, as, as the property name suggests, it allows you to uh, change the size of your font. Um, by default, um, at least in Firefox, I think it's 16 pixels um, is your is your um, standard font size. Uh, of course, for headings, it's different because headings have different levels um, at H1, H2, H3. But I think the I think the the default is 16 pixels for uh, most everything else. But you can change the uh, font size, you know, so let's go with, um, so I'm going to apply this to, uh, let's go and apply this to just the paragraph for now. So, <coughs> and uh, font size, let's do, I don't know that's ridiculous, but let's do 40 pixels. So now you can see the paragraph is kind of larger than the than the heading, the head, the headings. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, that's how you change the font size. 
Um, let's see here. What else can... Uh, uh, font style is uh, something else you can do. Uh, you can say you have a choice of um, inherit initial. Uh, the most basic uh, usage of this is to make an italic. All right, so if you make it italic, uh, now you can see it's, uh, the paragraph is italicized. All right. So uh, that's pretty much it uh, as far as fonts are, fonts are concerned uh, real, on, the, on the basic level. Uh, like I said, uh, with, uh, like, with, like with a lot of things in CSS, uh, this, this, goes, this can go much deeper. Um, but, um, you know, I think this suffices for for covering uh, at, the, at the basic level of fonts, okay? So, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it, guys. That wraps up part one. Um, hope you found this useful. Um, feel free to ask me any questions um, in Twitch or uh, on uh, in Oklahoma Slack. Uh, my handle is at coderaj7470, and I'll try my best to answer all of your questions, all right? So uh, that sums it up for part one. Uh, in part two, I'll talk about the CSS box model and uh, the Firefox browser inspector um, and go from there. All right, cool. Well, uh, glad you could join us. Uh, appreciate your time today. Um, and we'll see you in part two. Take care.